Is it possible that Elon Musk might be facing a penalty of $156 million from the SEC for announcing his acquisition of Twitter shares too late? You've likely heard that Elon Musk bought a big chunk of Twitter recently and this sent the stock shooting up. We'll break that down, but perhaps less front and center is the story that the required filing that you have to make when acquiring such a large chunk of a public company was allegedly late. Is that a big deal? Well, the delay in filing would have allowed Musk to acquire more shares before the stock popped, potentially at a lower price than he would have paid had the news come out earlier. And it looks like this is what happened. He may have ended up making more money, like over $156 million more than if he had filed on time. Where does that number come from? Let's find out. Hey everyone, my name is Preet and this channel is for anyone who wants to learn more about the world of money around us. It was revealed on early Monday, April 4th, that Elon Musk had taken a 9.2% stake in Twitter. SEC rules stipulate that if you acquire 5% or more of a publicly traded company, you have to file what's called a 13D form within 10 calendar days, which then becomes public information. Now, there are some exceptions to this requirement. A short form, less detailed version of the 13D called a 13G can be used instead if you are not intending to influence or change the control of the company. I'm not a securities lawyer, but from what I can see from the rules, it looks like if you qualify to file a 13G, you have a lot more time to make your filing within 45 days after the calendar year end, as long as you stay under 10% ownership of the company. So the key to being able to use a 13G, which is the short form filing, is if your intention is to be a passive investor in the sense that you are not going to try to sway management, influence the direction of the company and so on. And so if that were the case, it didn't look to have been a problem to make a 13G short form filing about crossing the 5% ownership threshold. However, Twitter made a filing on Tuesday, April 5th that indicated one day earlier on Monday, April 4th, the company had signed a letter with Musk that puts Musk on the board of directors. So not passive and caps Musk's potential ownership of Twitter stock to no more than 14.9%. And on Tuesday, April 5th, Musk filed a 13D form. This is the longer form, includes more details, and is generally associated with someone with an activist interest and intention to influence the direction the company takes. Now, perhaps people will argue when Musk's interests switched from passive to active, but I think that this will be very important. And remember, this is not the same passive versus active delineation when it comes to investment management styles in a portfolio or fund. This has to do with attempts to influence the management of a company or not. Now I have spent the last two months analyzing what all these guys do and I still can't figure it out. It would be tough to defend a passive intent given Musk's recent behaviors. On March 25th, he ran the following Twitter poll. Free speech is essential to a functioning democracy. Do you believe that Twitter rigorously adheres to this principle? Over 2 million people voted with 70.4% saying no. He replied to the tweet, the consequences of this poll will be important. Please vote carefully. The next day, March 26th, he asked people, well, what should he do then? You could argue this was part of a well thought out strategy and not an off the cuff decision. Last year, when Musk ran another poll asking users, much is made lately of unrealized gains being a means of tax avoidance. So I propose selling 10% of my Tesla stock. Do you support this? People again voted with a fairly strong majority of 57.9% saying yes. But he was probably already going to have to do this to pay a large tax bill that was coming due as a result of some stock options that were previously awarded years ago. Was this just another master marketing play that would make the large sale of stock less concerning for the markets? while also playing to his superfans anti-establishment bent? Maybe. The point is, you can't discount that Musk is arguably the greatest marketer in the world, and there is a method to his Twitter madness, at least sometimes. On the other hand, he has so much money that changing his mind from being a passive investor to an activist investor in Twitter based on a poll may indeed be plausible. 
Let's put his purchase into context. From the new filing, we know that he paid a total of just a hair under $2.65 billion to acquire 73,115,038 shares. And incidentally, his stake was actually 9.1%, not the 9.2% mentioned in all the headlines, which were based on the incorrect number on the 13G filing from just one day prior. The Bloomberg Billionaires Index lists Elon Musk's net worth at $265 billion. So buying $2.65 billion worth of Twitter amounts to just under 1% of his net worth. As a reference point, the median net worth of an American household was $121,700 in 2019. 1% of that is $1,217, which is like buying a top of the line iPhone Pro Max with 256 gigabytes of storage. If Elon Musk dropped Twitter and the screen broke, he could just buy another phone and get on with his life. So by virtue of just how much wealth he has, and how tied up he is with Tesla, SpaceX, the Boring Company, and Neuralink, it's actually not implausible that it was a shoot from the hip decision. In any case, if Musk had activist intentions all along, then by failing to file that 13D within 10 calendar days, he may have ended up with an unfair advantage since he was able to buy more shares at prices that had not been affected by the news, as the news had not come out when it maybe should have. If we break down his transactions, let's note a few key dates and numbers. He passed the 5% threshold on March 14th. That starts the 10 calendar day clock if he is acting as an activist investor. That means the news of his 5% stake should have been filed by March 24th. Let's be conservative and say that the news should have come out the morning of the 11th day before trading begins. Any shares acquired after this time would have been at an allegedly lower price than he should have been able to acquire them for. If we add up just these transactions, we see he acquired just over 13 million shares. He spent $513 million on those shares, and we can quickly calculate that he bought those shares for an average price of $39.06 per share. Now let's look at the pop in the stock price after it was announced that he had acquired shares. The market closing price before the news was $39.91. The market open price after the news became public on Monday, April 4th was $47.87. So those extra shares he bought had a gain of $8.81 per share for a total gain on these extra shares of $115,832,000 and change. Now, if we take the price of Twitter shares at the end of the trading day after the second announcement, indicating a switch from passive to activist on Tuesday, that closing price was $50.98. Instead of an extra $8.81 per share, that would be $11.92, and that would have made his extra gain from filing late equal to $156 million and change. That jives with what David Cass came up with, a finance professor at the University of Maryland, quoted in the Washington Post. About the whole situation, he's quoted as saying, I really don't know what's going through his mind. Was he ignorant or knowledgeable that he was violating securities law? He went on to indicate that whomever was handling the trades for Musk should have known. I imagine a lot of people have questions for Musk's legal advisors, who in their defense might actually literally be asleep at the wheel. Given that they might drive Teslas with autopilot, this is in no way a comment on their performance, knowledge, or fitness in serving the interest of their company and stakeholders. Please don't sue me. So two big questions remain. Can Musk defend his actions from a regulatory perspective? And how big will the fine be? After just a bit of light digging, I found a few fines for missing 13D deadlines to be around $100,000-ish. But those cases were not as high profile as this. Musk has had a series of run-ins with the SEC already, and the sheer size of the allegedly improper gains are on one hand huge, $156 million, and on the other hand, tiny for Musk. Again, comparing that number to the median US household net worth, it's the equivalent of 72 bucks. Will they ask him to pay the $156 million as a fine? Or will it be closer to the $100,000 for other late filers? I guess we'll find out, but I have a feeling that this will be highly scrutinized. And maybe it's just all part of the Elon Musk experience.
If you like this video, I would appreciate it if you hit that like button and subscribe to my channel to learn more about money and managing your finances. And of course, hit the bell to turn on notifications for when I publish new content. And I will see you in the next video.